Rich Marks here, day four on our cactus painting. And yesterday I did a little time lapse showing how I approach the cactus arms. And again, as most of the time I do, I do the shadow, mid-tone, then the highlights. And that gives me the illusion of a rounded cylinder. And uh, this is a saguaro cactus. And the saguaro cactus has these ribs. It's made up of all these ribs. And then on the crest of each rib, you know, they're beveled on the crest are the needles, and that's why I'm showing these dotted areas, and I hope they're coming out okay on this film. I kind of have to have my camera back a little ways because this is a three foot, three and a half foot by five foot board that I'm painting on here. So I'm gonna do another time lapse, and I'm going to do the other three arms and, and do it in the sequence that I've showed you. That's my method for doing my murals, and that's the reason I'm doing these tutorials showing you how I approach murals, how I'm able to go quickly and um, get it to look pretty real, yet painterly. So we're going to get at it, so I hope you enjoy it. Hello, day five here on our cactus painting. And today I'm gonna to be putting in the brush, um, some other cactuses, and it's basically gonna be an exercise in light and dark. So I'm gonna get right after it, and I'm going into some black and brown, and I'm just roughly going to throw in my trunks. There's a tree here. I'm just going to quickly put in the main branches, the main trunk, starting with my darks. What I've mixed here is black with red, blue, and yellow to kind of get this brown color, but it still has a little bit of a blue hue to it because I've added a little bit more blue than the red and the yellow. It's giving me a a nice shadowy look. So right now I'm not too concerned with getting too detailed as I always say. And I just want to rough in my branches. And that's going to create a nice little contrast against this yellow grass. Anytime you throw down a really dark against the light, this is a nice contrast. And I'm using again my half inch brush. allows me to get a pretty thin line if I turn it on its edge and then depending on the pressure that I put on the end of the brush is how thick the stroke will be.
A lot of times when you're out in uh, these desert scapes, they always have just a bunch of cactuses and, and bushes and things clumped together. And a lot of times they're right at the base of these saguaros. And that was the case on this guy. I was shocked since I've only been down here about two years, coming up on two years, I was shocked at just how much vegetation is out there and how, how pretty it is and the different colors there are depending on the time of year. A lot of people think desert's just barren landscape, which there definitely are areas of that, but this area right where we live is, is pretty much like this. There's a lot of vegetation, a lot of scary vegetation, <laughs> a lot of needles and thorns and things, but it has a beauty to it for sure. Now these, these dark trunks I'm putting in now, a lot of that will get covered up by the actual leaves. But it's important for me to get the darkness in there first, the dark tones. And I'm, I'm not being so concerned, even though I'm, I keep looking over here at my research photo. But I don't have to represent it completely accurately. Nice little secondary clump coming off of this guy. All right. I like that. I like the contrast a lot. And what I'm doing is, as I keep, you know, I have this little pile of a uh, pool of blue, of red, of yellow, of black, all my primaries, and I'm just dunking in each of them uh, various degrees. Like if I want it to go a, a little bluer, obviously I'm dunking a little more blue, but I'm still hitting every little color. I'm just kind of mixing as I go. Okay, so that's probably good to show you the dark area. Hit this guy here real quick. And then I'm gonna show you some mid-tones. And I'm gonna do that by cleaning this brush. I really like this brush to do bushes. And then I'm just gonna mix on the fly here a little bit of green color and I'm, I'm going now so I've got my yellow my red my blue my black I'm going into all these different colors to give me a shade of of green that's a little bluer then I go to like a more brilliant green by going straight yellow and blue on a little red to give it a brownie look black on this one. So right here I'm getting a good good color. Good mid-tone color. And I'm gonna start just blocking in. I call this blocking in because it's quick 
areas of a certain color, which I'll, I'll refine later. I'll come back in and I'll put highlights and I'll uh, do a little more detail on the leaves. But I'm, I'm squinting and I'm doing that thing where I'm just seeing solid blocks of color. So I want to put those in. They go behind the cactus and kind of come out on this side. And I'm still staying true to the direction that the leaves are going. You know, when a, when a bush grows, it's got branches that go a certain way, and then the leaves kind of follow that direction. I'm staying true to that. Seeing definite patterns here of the midtone. Some I cross in front, some I keep behind. You know, right now, even if I was to step back, that's starting to take shape. But again. What I found is it just so boils down to light and dark, shadow and light, and your color tones. If you can really get a grasp of that, your, your paintings will be much better. And again, this is my technique. I don't know how exactly true it is to what they're teaching in college just what I found out through the years by painting. I've been painting professionally for about 20 years. So you figure out, you know, what works, what looks good. A lot of people have other methods and that's fine. That's, that works too. Okay, so that shows the darks, the mids. Now let's clean our brush and do a little bit of the highlights. Since this is a quick tutorial, that'll show you exactly how that comes together real fast. I mean, this is gonna be about a 10, 15 minute video. And I've gone back into my palette and I've mixed more yellow with some of the charismatic sky color to get my highlight. And then I'm gonna come back in and that's got a nice kind of earthy, earthy look to it with that sky color in there. And these leaves are kind of crazy looking when you look at them up close. I'm not even sure this plant is called. I can find out, but they look like a regular leaf, but when you, when you hold them there, they feel very waxy and they're thick, almost rubbery. And then we're getting, since my light source is coming this way, getting a certain amount of backlighting coming in. So that's where we're getting the light coming from behind. Now I'll come in here. Start bringing that up. This is where we start to cover up a lot of this. Again, I threw this in the background because you're, you're not gonna have a solid area of green and I want some of that background to show through.
And then now I'm going to show you the next sequence of highlights by taking that same color I just did, adding a little more of the sky color to it, and just a little bit more white. And that's going to give me my lighter shade, which is kind of a sage, sagey, it's a tough one to say, sagey. Not even really a word, but it's got the sage look, which is what we've got back here. We're bringing it in here. And I try to keep, uh, even though this brush is getting a little bit clumpy, I try to keep most of my paint on the edge, on the end. And then hope you can see those subtleties, but see how it's starting to take shape as a bush here, a little mini tree. And I will just keep doing this method the whole way up where I've got more trunks. Eventually the bush will come up into here, kind of frame out this cactus. And it'll be here, then we'll have another one here, and then we'll have some nice lights and darks here, and then some filtered uh, highlight coming in the grass front of the cactus which will give it some nice depth so anyway that's day five i'm going to continue painting and do a time lapse of that and attach it to this so thanks for watching Here we are, day six on our cactus painting. And as you can see from the time lapse I ended with yesterday, we've got a lot of this filled in now. I still have to come back in here, hit some mid-tones and some highlights. And then today we're gonna tackle this bush back here and then some of this foreground bush um, kind of pull our scene together. And then I'm going to do a time lapse of the rest of this cactus trunk. So let's get to it. I've mixed up some greens here. I've got three different tones. And as you can see, I again have my pile of yellow, red, black, and blue primaries plus black. Then I've got a container of white down here. So that's all I use um, every painting is primaries and I just mix my own colors. So I'm going to be using today this brush. It's about an inch big. It's got a beveled edge. It's pretty frayed at the end but it's going to be good for the bushes. So I'm going to get to it. First I'm going to soak the tip, make it more pliable. water it's starting to drip so I'm gonna come down in here and get the shadow area right off the bat and this board I'm noticing has been taking eh, two coats of most everything so I quickly threw down my first coat, getting the areas that I want to be dark. And then I'll come back in with the next lightest color, which would be a dark, kind of like an army green. So I've been right down in here. Now I'm moving over to here and then I'll move up to here. 
far as my different hues go. So now I'm into that army green. And I'm just quickly filling in areas with solid color. Again, keeping in mind the flow of the bush that I want to emulate. switch over to this brush and then going into the lighter green now it's that sagey looking one that we had yesterday Throwing those in. It's like a plain air situation where you're battling the light as it keeps moving, changing your shadows. Now I'm going to rinse off just a bit, a little bit lighter, but not too much. And then as I get to the end of this bush, I really go for the blade part, the edge of this brush. Just to give myself a thinner line. And now I'm gonna go even lighter. Just a little bit more yellow. And that nice warmth of the sun. It's filtering through, hitting some of these branches and leaves and creating the light area. this one. As you can see, every time you put a lighter color, it makes it come forward. That's what I mean by the lights and darks. It's all about them. And dark, it recedes. Light it, and it comes at you. And then when I get towards the end of this painting, I'm, I'm gonna get a smaller brush and I'm gonna put in some of these details of these branches coming up. And I'm gonna go even lighter still. Feeling 
That's a nice illusion of branches coming at you, branches going back. here where I started out with this brush I was telling you that it's probably going to take two coats well it's dried enough and I'm going to come back get that second coat and then I'm going to come in with the mid-tones in the shadow area and actually use a little bit more blue as we go Let's get that nice ambient atmospheric condition in the shadows. Now while that's still wet, I'll come back in with some mid-tones. Can be quick, spontaneous in here. Takes the pressure off. I think it's important when you paint not to put too much pressure on yourself. Take a deep breath, relax, remember it's only paint, and it's your creation. Break that area up a bit here with some black. Oh, it's still wet. Me and I mix. Taking the edge, my brush, get some of these dudes coming up, these branches. They're darker because they're on this side of the light source in the shadow. Okay, now I'm in the spot where my foreground bush is going to be in front of this, but I kind of see that I should have put a little bit more grass in the background, so I'm going to hit that real quick. And that's essentially mostly white, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. when I introduce the green into that white and yellow, it gives me the, the nice shadowy looking area of the grass. Come back in with white and yellow. A little bit of red.
There, and that gives me the area that I need now that I can put my front bush over that coming out. And let that dry just a bit. And now I'm coming back in with black just to get these really deep, dark, shadowy areas. Let's give it just a little bit more depth. And then I'm gonna stand back and look. Liking that. And then I'll, I'll keep moving my way forward and then I can always come back and tweak it if I don't like how it's looking, if I need to add something. Um, that's the beauty of paint, especially latex and acrylic. You can just go right back over it. So it dries pretty quick. So that's a quick tutorial on how to do light and dark on a background bush um, in a loose style, a technique I use again for murals. And now I'm going to do a time lapse of the front bush and the cactus trunk. Thanks for watching. Here we are, day six on our cactus painting. And as you can see from the time lapse I ended with yesterday, we've got a lot of this filled in now. I still have to come back in here, hit some mid-tones and some highlights. And then today we're gonna tackle this bush back here and then some of this foreground bush, um, kind of pull our scene together and then I'm gonna do a time lapse of the rest of this cactus trunk. So let's get to it. I've mixed up some greens here. I've got three different tones. And as you can see, I again have my pile of yellow, red, black, and blue primaries plus black. Then I've got a container of white down here. So that's all I use um, every painting is primaries and I just mix my own colors. So I'm gonna be using today this brush. It's about an inch big, it's got a beveled edge. It's pretty frayed at the end, but it's gonna be good for the bushes. So I'm gonna to get to it. First I'm gonna soak the tip, make it more pliable. starting to drip. I'm going to come down in here and get the shadow area. Right off the bat. And this board I'm noticing has been taking yeah, two coats.
coats of most everything. So I quickly threw down my first coat, getting the areas that I want to be dark. And then I'll come back in with the next lightest color, which will be a dark, kind of like an army green. So I've been right down in here. Now I'm moving over to here, and then I'll move up to here. As far as my different hues go. So now I'm into that army green. And I'm just quickly filling in areas with solid color. Again, keeping in mind the flow of the bush that I want to emulate. switch over to this brush. And then going into the lighter green now. It's that sagey looking one that we had yesterday. Throwing those in. It's like a plain air situation where you're battling the light as it keeps moving, changing your shadows. off just a bit a little bit lighter but not too much And then as I get to the end of this bush, I really go for the blade part, the edge of this brush. Just to give myself a thinner line. And now I'm gonna go even lighter. Just a little bit more yellow. That nice warmth of the sun. It's filtering through, hitting some of these branches and leaves and creating the light area. one. As you can see, every time you put a lighter color, it makes it come forward. That's what I mean by the lights and darts. It's all about them. And dark, it recedes. Light it, and it comes at you. get towards the end of this painting, I'm, I'm going to get a smaller brush and I'm going to put in some of these details of these branches coming up. And then I'm going to go even 
lighter still. Giving us a nice illusion of branches coming at you, branches going back. Okay, and then this area here where I started out with this brush. I was telling you that it's probably gonna take two coats. Well, it's dried enough, but I'm gonna come back. Get that second coat, and then I'm gonna come in with the mid-tones in the shadow area. And actually use a little bit more blue as we go. Just that nice, ambient, atmospheric, in the shadows. And now while that's still wet, I'll come back in with some mid-tones. can be quick, spontaneous in here, takes the pressure off. I think it's important when you paint not to put too much pressure on yourself. Take a deep breath, relax, remember it's only paint, and it's your creation. Break that area up a bit here with some black. Oh, it's still wet. Me a nice mix. Taking the edge, my brush, get some of these dudes coming up, these branches. They're darker because they're on this side of the light source in the shadow. Now I'm in a spot where my foreground bush is going to be in front of this, but I kind of see that I should have put a little bit more grass in the background, so I'm going to hit that real quick. And that's essentially mostly white, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. It's 
when I introduce the green into that white and yellow, it gives me the, the nice shadowy looking area of the grass. And come back in with white and yellow. And a little bit of red. And that gives me the area that I need now that I can put my front bush over that coming out. And let that dry just a bit. And now I'm coming back in with black just to get these really deep, dark, shadowy areas. Let's give it just a little bit more depth. And then I'm gonna stand back and look. Like that. And then I'll, I'll keep moving my way forward and then I can always come back and tweak it if I don't like how it's looking, if I need to add something. Um, it's the beauty of paint, especially latex and acrylic. You can just go right back over it. So it dries pretty quick. So that's a quick tutorial on how to do light and dark on a background bush um, in a loose style, a technique I use again for murals. And now I'm going to do a time lapse of the front bush and the cactus trunk. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, day eight on my cactus painting. And you can see that I'm very, very close to being done. But what I still need to do is I need to put shadow, more shadow on this side of the cactus. I think it would look a little better. I'm gonna go back in here, get a little more detail going in the branches. I wanna bring this shadow across here a little more, a little stronger to create some darkness down there, kind of balance it out. And then I'm going to bring just a little bit more blues, bluish hues down into here. And just tweak things a little bit. Um, might throw in another cloud or two. I haven't decided that. But uh, here it is as it stands. I'm going to do a time lapse and um, get this thing done. So uh, thanks for watching all my tutorials. And I'm going to get after it right now.